Yeah. <laughs> that sounds real good right now. <laughs> hey, everybody. Max from Moab Off-Road, Louisville, Kentucky. However, now we're in Nashville, Tennessee, picking up a Jeep here with Ian. Thanks for having us. No problem, man. This is a, a TJ that they built for Genride Off-Road. Can you maybe tell our website viewers what all you guys did to it? Yeah, it's no problem, man. It started out as a 97 TJ we got here with bone stock. Did the uh, Genrite Off-Road Highline Kit. Uh, did their mini boat side rockers. And then the aluminum rear corner guards. Front bumper, rear tire carrier. And then only a 4-inch uh, TerraFlex kit that gave us room to fit the 40-inch tires. Keeps the Jeep nice and low, low center of gravity. And yet you can still stuff the whole 40 up into the fender when you're out wheeling. Uh, rear's a Dana 70U, front's a Dana 60 Ford High Pinion, all ARB, all chrome molly, 513 gears, RCV shafts, both front and rear, all 300M. And then the drivetrain, we left bone stock, uh, except put a slip yoke eliminator on the transfer case. Cool, cool. Everybody, I think if you're following this thread on the forum, then you know that this is going to uh, be at the shop for the next couple months. You guys can stop by, take a look at it. Uh, we're going to house it for Tony at Genrite until he can make it back out uh, our way to pick it up, maybe August or October, and uh, Ian, I wanted to ask you a few things. How did you get into this gig? I applied uh, online on the internet. Yeah? Yeah, they had uh, an online application. They were looking for hosts for the show. Uh, 5,000 people applied, so I applied, and uh, the next thing you know, they flew a bunch of us down, pointed a camera at all of us, and I was moving to Nashville two weeks later. Cool. And your background is what? I mean, you come from a mechanic background, a TV background? No, I did I did an episode of Monster Garage like a long time ago, but a year before I got this gig. Um, but before that, I was a high school shop teacher for nine years. I taught auto shop, a welding shop, and metal fab shop. And then uh, before that, I was a GM specialist, a driveline technician, which means I just uh, rebuilt rear ends, transmissions, transfer cases at a GM dealer in Ontario. I did that for about nine years, too. Wow. So you're not you're not new to working on anything, which you know I think everybody gets on the show. But you know myself as a, a you know person that catches the show and everything, I have to wonder from behind the scenes. You know what what all goes on with building these rigs? I mean, do you have you know a normal 40 hour week, 50 hour week? Do you have a team of people that help you? Is, are you a one man wrecking crew or <laughs> what? You know how how does all this happen behind the scenes? Every every show on the power block, the guy who owns this joint. He has one rule, and he always has, and that was if you're going to go on TV and you're going to say, I just got done building this part, you have to be the person that built it. There's wow. n You can't have any uh, anybody else doing the work for you because it costs the show credibility in the end because you don't look like you know what you're doing when it comes time to point a camera at you and do it. So uh, every show, horsepower, muscle car, trucks, and extreme, uh, everyone on that show does the majority of the work. We have one shop assistant who works on all the shows. His name's Chris. He's a great guy. He's the guy that's going to, you know, go over the truck front to back uh, before it goes on a trail or before it goes to a race a racetrack. Uh, just to double check everything that you did, just another set of eyes on it. Uh, but the majority of the work here, if it's done on the show, it's done by the guys talking on TV. Wow, that's that's pretty impressive. Yeah. And I was going to tell you guys, I, I tried my hardest to get a little bit of footage inside, but it's a disclaimer. They wouldn't let me do it. But me and Dwayne did get the tour of the entire facility, and I wish that you all could see it. Cause it's yeah, it's it's, uh, it's like a mechanic's playground in there. It's everything you could wish and want for. Yeah, it's pretty trippy. We had they had the lockdown outside cameras in there not too long ago. Because what happens with these shows is you've got guys bringing in a product that hasn't even been to market. It's not even going to market for like a year out. And uh, you've got stuff in there that if anyone got a shot of it or a picture of it and got, and one of their competitors saw, it, then it gets it gets our us in, in trouble with the lawyers because we deal with everybody. You know, you could have a, a tuner from a company like Bully Dog uh, that isn't going to come out for two years, and the bank's guys are going to be in next week. You know what I mean? Like, it, oh, it's, yeah, wow. there's guys in that building. That's all they do is worry about that kind of stuff. So yeah. they wear suits to work. So that's not me. And I, yeah, I kind of wonder because inside there, I mean, there's like chain link. You know, areas that are locked and, you know, sheets over them. You know, of yeah. course, me, I'm like, I wonder what's in there. I see some parts or something in there. What's going on? Yeah. No, it's cool. That's the coolest thing about this gig is you get to see the first of a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that, that's the part that's trivial. Like, we got a, a, a JK coming in next week from Rusty's that it's going to be uh, uh, their bolt on uh, coil over long arm JK kit. You know, it's being rapid prototype to make it to the show. Uh, it's going to be a JK built completely different than any other JK that's ever been done before. So it's, it's stuff like that that you get to do that is really, really kind of cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's like what we were all talking about inside there. I mean, it looks like, you know, you could pretty much come up with the wackiest idea and combination, and they'll say, sure, let's film it. Let's see. All right, sounds crazy. Let's do it. Yeah, that, that's, that's the best part about my job is I get to pick everything I want to do on the show, whatever you want to do it. And then what I do is I'll sit down with a producer and a director, and I'll map out 23 shows because that's what I make in a year is 23 episodes of TV. And uh, inside that time, I just put different projects in different holes, and they show up with a camera crew on the day that we tell them to show up. We make TV. Wow. So, but it's it's a full time gig, you know. It takes it, to make to make one chunk of TV, which is 17 minutes and 30 seconds worth of TV for a half hour program. It takes 10 hours to make. Wow. So it's it's 10 hours worth of filming to make that 17 and a half minutes, and to get that 10 hours, it takes 10 days. Oh wow. So like today. We shot uh, all day for eight hours, and we filmed uh, about a minute of TV. That's what we did. Wow. Because we, sh- we shoot everything. The ra- if you're taking, we're taking a rock pole apart right now, so you have to shoot every single nut and bolt that comes off. Yeah. And, and then they go and cut and chop and make it yep. a minute long. Exactly. And it looks like you just assembled a rock wall in one minute. Yeah. 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 And that's why, that's what makes these shows different than everybody else. There's lots of other car shows out there, but they'll dedicate like one day to one show. But we put ten days into one show. And wow. so we have 10 days worth of working time to make one TV show, which is why these shows get to go into such detail that other shows don't get to go into. Now, do you have a lot? I mean, is it pretty much every time that you're working on something, they're filming? No, I plan. What I'll do is I sit down with my director and my producer, and I plan out. I'll say, I need a camera guy on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And on Monday, so then the other, shoot something. the off days, you're, fam, um, you're a fan guy. Yeah, you're working. <laughs> yeah. There's been lots of times. Like, the roll cage that's in this truck, it was... Completely put in, tacked, prepped, set up, everything was done. And then I went in with a, a just tacked in place. I went in, cut all the tacks, blew the whole roll cage out. And then they brought a camera guy in, pointed a camera at it, and then I put it back in. Oh, now, wow. this was an off the shelf cage kit. That's not that big a deal. Yeah. But I've built an entire tube chassis where you get it all done. I go in, I'll label all the tubes with a sharpie, and then cut it all apart, throw it in a pile on the floor, and then the camera guy shows up the next day and you put it all together. So wow. that's why that stuff seems like it's done like that, because yeah. it was done yesterday. Yeah. Or it was done last week sometime. You know, so that that's what takes them. Or you'll put an axle together and then take it back apart to double check everything. You know, you do a lot of stuff twice here. Yeah. What what out of all the builds that you've done there would you say is your favorite? Favorite to build? Let's say favorite to build and then maybe favorite to wheel. They're two different rigs. No, it's be the same rig. I like the little Suzuki Samurai build. It's yeah. it's stupid simple. It's a turbo diesel Jetta that runs on waste vegetable oil. It's just a bunch of junk air parts. It's, it, to me, it's what makes wheeling cool. Like, I love Jeeps, and I love the, the over-the-kill stuff I built that's like, you know, the big S10 in there that's got $100,000 worth of parts in it. It's cool. But the best part about wheeling is you can have a $5,000 rig like that Sammy, and you can roll out to an off-road park, and you will have just as much fun as the guy who spent hundred grand yeah. on his rig. And honestly, that thing, you fire that thing up, start driving on the trail, and it smells like French fry oil and stuff, and guys are getting hungry. It you turns hear the just turbo spool. Yeah, you I'm hear like, the turbo. The yeah, the it, it, it spins just as much heads as that S10 does. Because everyone comes over and like, what is that thing, man? It's a, it's a turbo diesel, and it's got so much torque. And I just, that to me is what makes off road different than any other automotive hobby. You can't show up at a car show with a $5,000 car. They laugh you out of the building, you know? Yeah. But you can show up at an off road park with a $5,000 rig. If you put a lot of labor in it, and you and you built it right and spent your money in different spots, then you're just going to have a great time. And people are going to think it's cool. And that's what I dig about. Heck yeah, that's cool. Well, hey, I appreciate it. We won't hey, take no up your problem, time man. any longer. All right, it's all good, man. Appreciate you having us down, spend the time to do a little video for my website viewers. It's all good, They man. dig it. We dig yeah, it. for sure. I'm glad you guys came and had fun with the Jeep. Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe I can take this thing out wheeling. I would. <laughs>